Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with the Let's Talk Money channel and a video for all you hardcore dividend investors. All you out there in the nation know, I love me some dividends. Dividends have accounted for nearly half the total return on stocks over time, 42% of the stock market return since 1930, and reinvesting those for compound returns is about the best investing you can do. But there's actually a better type of dividend stock out there beyond what you normally see in dividend videos. Royalty trusts are special types of companies set up to hold an income producing asset and then pass all that income on to investors. And not only do these offer dividend yields more than twice the market average, there are a lot of other benefits here that make these an investment you need to check out. Now these companies usually buy assets like an oil field or gold or a copper mine. Now for this, the exploration company gets a one-time payment for that percentage share of the production. The company continues to manage the asset, so drilling for oil on the fields or, or mining the gold reserves. Royalty trusts then have no employees. It's just a financial account that receives that percentage share from the exploration company and passes it on to investors. And because the structure is so simple here, there's really no financial statements to analyze. There aren't any of those accounting tricks that the company uses to make revenue look bigger or expenses smaller. It's just one income producing assets and the distributions. And Nation, we could be starting on a commodity super cycle with prices for oil and other commodities already up double digits this year, making now a great time to talk about these royalty trusts as an investment. In this video, I'll explain royalty trusts as well as detail the pros and cons of these income investments. I'll show you the hidden tax benefits and then reveal five royalty trusts to buy for massive cash flow. We're getting started, but you know I've got to send that special shout out to all you out there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. First in our royalty trust list is Gold Royalty Corporation, ticker GROY, a $236 million royalty company out of Canada. The company acquires royalty and stream rights and other interest in mines at different stages of the mining cycle for a more balanced portfolio. Now you're going to notice throughout this list that I've tried to include royalty trusts from different commodities, so not all just from that traditional oil and gas trust. This way, you're going to get a more diversified income stream tied to gold, oil, steel, even uranium. The current portfolio includes 18 royalties between 0.5% to 2% ownership on 12 projects across the Americas and additional rights to acquire 9 more royalties. On just that current portfolio though, that's more than 14.7 million ounces of gold on a measured and indicated basis and over 17 million inferred ounces. And now while I'm not as bullish on gold this year as I am on some of those other commodities, gold miners can still do really well because the cost of bullion is so much higher than their production costs. You can see here that even on a fairly modest increase in bullion, shares of gold royalty have jumped 8.8% over the last month, almost double the increase in the price of gold. So even if interest rates do keep the price of gold range bound, miners are still going to see that cash flow continue to increase it, and royalty companies are going to send that cash straight on to investors. The company has a strong balance sheet here with over $87 million in cash and equivalents against no debt, so lots of financial flexibility to acquire more of those rights from companies and benefit on this trend. I'll leave a link to the company's investor presentation in the description below, so if you want to check that out. One of the most interesting royalty trusts I've seen, Uranium Royalty Corporation, ticker UROY, is a play on their demand for uranium and nuclear energy. Uranium Royalty is the first to apply that royalty model of business to uranium assets, so it has that partnership interest in uranium projects, receives the cash flow, and then passes that on through investors through the dividend distribution. The company has a diversified portfolio across North America and in every stage of development from permitted projects, production, and exploration. Its partners include some of the largest uranium miners in the market like Cameco, Rio Tinto, and UEC. And here you can see how this is set up. For example, the company has a 9% interest and 1% gross overriding royalty in the MacArthur River project run by Cameco in Canada. The project is licensed to produce 25 million pounds a year with proven and probable reserves of almost 392 million pounds. And now like gold royalty, this one is still in the acquisition stage of its life, so it's a new royalty trust that can pay dividends for decades to come. And that's going to be important for those pros and cons of the royalty trust that we'll look at next. So let's look at those pros and cons of royalty trusts and whether these are good investments. Now, the big upside to trust is that higher dividend yield compared to other income stocks. For example, the Schwab Dividend ETF, ticker SCHD, is one of the stronger dividend funds out there, but only pays a 2.7% yield. Even the Vanguard Real Estate Fund, ticker VNQ, which owns those income-producing REITs, 
only pays a 2.1% dividend. With Royalty Trust, though, you not only get that higher dividend, usually around 5% and higher, but most of that isn't taxable. Now, we'll talk more about taxes on Royalty Trust later in the video, but these have a great hidden tax break where, where you only pay taxes on the investment after you sell it, instead of those yearly taxes on dividend payments. Another upside here is that because these trusts are special types of companies, they don't pay corporate taxes on their income. It's just a much more efficient way to hold these assets compared to other companies like an Exxon or a Chevron. The royalty trusts are able to distribute almost all of their income instead of having to pay those operational costs and the taxes. But there are some downsides to royalty trusts that you need to know about if you're going to decide whether these are right for your portfolio. First, these are limited life investments and may have declining dividend payments in the latter years of that asset. Remember, royalty trusts are set up by buying rights to that oil field or the mining deposit. After that initial setup, they don't buy any other rights, so, so once the production runs out, so do the payments. Of course, for most of these, these mining and oil assets, that's going to be up to two or three decades of production, so it's not something most investors have to worry about. Also, because of advancements in technology, a lot of times that production life of these mines or, or these assets, that's going to get extended because they can then pull every last ounce out, out of the field. When that production does get down to a point though, the operator is either going to buy back the shares or the trust manager liquidates the assets and sends a check out to all the shareholders. Another drawback of a royalty trust though is the payouts can be extremely volatile. You're getting a cut of the sales here, so everything depends on that commodity price as well as how much the field or the mine is producing. With commodity prices surging this year, that's a good thing because a lot of these trusts have been able to increase their payouts by 40 and 50% over the last year but it can also work the other way as well when prices are falling. Next here is one of the most popular royalty trusts, Sabine Royalty, ticker SBR, an energy trust established in 1982 on landowners' royalties in six states. The company has an oil and gas portfolio that covers over 2 million acres in Florida, Louisiana, Mississippi, New Mexico, Oklahoma, and Texas. Reserves on the assets are estimated to produce for at least another 8 to 10 years, but the reserve life has been extended several times in the past on those new drilling techniques and, and discoveries in the fields. And that's going to be a big upside for these trusts. They do have that limited shelf life because of the depleting assets, but improvements in extracting those commodities is going to extend that life and, and can drive big swings in the stock price. Sabine has more than doubled its dividend so far this year to 29 cents a share. Now that's an 8.7% dividend yield and could go even higher if oil prices continue to run. Now the OPEC group of countries ended its most recent meeting without an agreement to increase production. That has a lot of analysts calling for $100 oil by the end of this year. For more of that diversification, I wanted to include the Masabi Trust, ticker MSB as well. Masabi is a steel royalty trust with an investment in mines operated by North Shore Mining, a subsidiary of Cleveland Cliffs. Now, North Shore mines the ore, processes it into pellets, and then sends it off to Cleveland Cliffs, and then pays Masabi royalties based on the selling price. So Masabi has no operational duties or costs here. It's just that trust structure that receives the royalties. That means the return here is going to be a function of iron ore prices, which are at multi-year highs, but still below the peak of 2008. Goldman Sachs believes we could be heading into a new commodity super cycle, and if we get even part of that proposed trillion dollar infrastructure bill, my guess is prices are going to go much higher and this stock will climb further. This is also one of the longer life trusts in the list, with an estimated reserves of nearly 800 million tons and over 15 years left in production. And the trust is going to pay quarterly dividends instead of monthly, but, but it has increased the payout 78% over the last year to April and is paying a 4.9% dividend yield. We've still got one more royalty trust to highlight, but taxes are a big topic in these, and, and you need to understand how a little bit of pain can actually be one of your biggest points of gain. So we've already talked about how these are special types of companies that don't pay corporate taxes as long as they pass on almost all their income to investors as that distribution. Now that means it's a great way to manage assets, much more efficient than those regular corporate structures, and it means you get a strong dividend yield as well. But it's also going to mean you're going to get a different tax form on these each year. The brokerage account where you hold your shares is going to send you a 1099 form for each of these royalty trusts that you own, and it's going to show you the distributions as well as how you report them on your taxes. And yes, it can be a pain figuring these out that first year, but it's actually pretty easy once you get it, and there is a huge benefit hidden here in the way these are taxed. Now, like MLPs, nearly all of your dividend on these royalty trusts comes to you as a return of capital. It's a return of the money that you invested in the shares, not technically a dividend or a return on your money. That means you don't pay taxes on the money you receive. The dividends you collect from these is going to go to lower in the price that you paid on the shares. 
So say you paid $5 for the shares and over five years, you collect $2 in dividends. And that means when you eventually do go to sell the shares, you take that adjusted cost basis of $3. Now that's that $5 original price minus the $2 in dividends collected. You take that when you're figuring the capital gains tax. That is gonna mean higher taxes on the capital gains when you sell, but all that money is tax-free while you're holding the shares. The Permian Basin Royalty Trust, ticker PBT, is another popular one here with one of the best upside potentials and dividends on the list. The trust includes 34 sites in Texas around that Permian Basin, which is a giant 75,000 square mile area in West Texas and, and home to the largest shell production fields in the country. The operator here, Burlington, is a subsidiary of ConocoPhillips, an excellent explorer and committed to extending the life of those assets. The trust was established in 1980 and has an estimated eight to 10 years left in the reserves, but that's probably conservative considering the operator is spending $3 million in drilling improvements and, and redeveloping those fields. PBT has already increased its dividend by 63% this year to that June payment for a 4.1% annualized yield, and, and I think that could increase even faster on the lower yield compared to some of these other trusts. Click on the video to the right for the seven penny stocks that pay dividends, penny stocks that actually pay you while you hold the shares. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.